Hello, everyone. Welcome to WSC Vlog. We are doing interviews for the Jam Room Fest happening this weekend. Uh, I am William. I do the Coger Center Arts Roundup. Uh, joined with me today is Joshua Lansenby. And we are joined by Mrs. Sally Gates. You want to tell us uh, your act, where you guys are from, and a little bit about what you guys do? Yeah, so we're from New York. Um, we play, I guess, like a mix of uh, jazz, metal, prog, like you name it, you know, like just like a blend of a lot of different genres. Um, it's in instrumental quartet. And we just put out a, our second album just on Friday, which is called Vonals, and that was released through Sardic Records. So we're basically, we're coming down to play all the new songs for you guys for the first time. <laughs> Yeah, no, it's very interesting. I, I when I first heard you guys uh, that you guys were going to perform, I looked into you guys and saw the improvisational metal which is such an interesting and honestly, it makes complete sense. I think it's, once you hear it, once I heard you guys perform mm -hmm. uh, on your record on Spotify, the, the first record you guys put out, it makes complete sense. And I'm very excited to see you guys live. So we have a few questions for you, if it's not too much of a bother. <laughs> um, <laughs> and yeah. I think it's honestly, a, this is a really big one. What are you guys' biggest influences? Because you guys have such a unique sound. What are the biggest influences you guys have in like metal and jazz and just in, in general? It's really not that much coming from a musical point of view. It's like, I, I wrote most of the material and I'm really visually influenced. So a lot of the things I'm doing, I just kind of have a picture in my head of like, whether it's like some surrealist painting or like a science fiction storyline or even things to do with, you know, like particle physics or anything like that. And I'm just trying to musically express these images. So it's not necessarily like coming from like distinct influences, but I mean, obviously, you know, like you absorb everything that you listen to and we all listen to, you know, like a huge variety of music. So I, I feel like that definitely comes through yeah, no, it, it's, re it's really interesting. You guys have such a very unique sound. Um, have you guys been able to perform live? I know New York has such a like big scene, but have you guys been able, uh, I saw you guys have a few tour dates into uh, Jam Fest. So have you guys had to, been able to perform that, that much live? Uh, we've done a little bit. Uh, we had a couple of shows in New York and then we went to Baltimore uh, earlier this year. Uh, we had maybe one show last year with Car Bomb and Cleric that was really amazing. Um, but for the most part, I mean, you know, we put out the first record mid pandemic. And so we couldn't, you know, tour or do anything. And we just recorded a live set uh, at the Sultan Room, which is a venue here, and just filmed it and sort of did that like in lieu of a record release. So this is the first time we really had to like, you know, take these songs around the country and get out and play for people properly. Yeah, no, uh, that, I, I had a feeling you guys would, uh, since you guys put out your first record right in the middle of a pandemic, you know, touring wouldn't be the first thing that came to mind. But do you guys have any crazy stories about what has happened at a show since you guys have such a weird intersection of, of music, you know? Yeah, I mean, nothing that crazy. Um, I mean, the most, I mean, not even music related, but the craziest thing was basically playing the week of lockdown in 2020. And even the afternoon of the show, we didn't even know if the venue was going to be open or if anyone was going to be there. That was just like such a strange time. And I think the venue shut down like the next day and then a couple of days lockdown happened. So that was just, wow. like, yeah. that was a strange time. <laughs> yeah, wow. Um, since you guys have had just a little bit of performances and stuff, do you guys have a favorite venue to perform in? Yeah, I mean, there's um, there's a few around town that I love. I mean, like I, I mentioned the Sultan Room, like they have mm. like this amazing like sort of backdrop. It's like, I'm not entirely sure what it's made of. It's maybe like LEDs or some kind of video wall, but it's like like amazing um, graphics and kind of visuals behind us. Um, it's always fun. And then like St. Vitus, we're playing there in October for the record release show. Um, that's always an amazing place to, to play. It's like, you know, really nice sound, just good vibes and everything. Uh, and then in Manhattan, um, New Blue is a really nice venue as well. Um, it's, again, like great sound, really nice club. So. Oh, yeah. Okay. That's really interesting. Um, so 
like you said, you, uh, you take more visual elements and things like that. How does that kind of start? How do you, uh, mu- musically, how do you guys start as a, as a group when you come from such a visual sort of basis of it? Uh, it all starts with me writing by myself. Um, like I might have, like, like I was saying, like maybe a picture in my head and like one example I use is disintegration. Like if you look like some of Dali's works, like he has, um, I think it's called the persistence uh, no, I should really look up this title. <laughs> it's um, so the persistence of memory, like the famous one with the clocks. Mm-hmm. But he has another version of that where it's essentially disintegrating, coming apart. And so there's like this one um, kind of plank, and then you see it's all like broken up into cubes in the second piece. So I kind of think of things like that, and like I might have like a melody that like we play, and then. I'll say, okay, so now it's going to disintegrate. So everyone just kind of like starts pulling it apart and like playing slightly out of time and it just sort of gradually breaks away from itself. Um, so when I write, you know, like I have, I have these ideas sitting by myself, like kind of improvising, composing and putting it together. And then I come to the band with like a full piece and, you know, so I have like actual music to give them <laughs> um, or, like the improv parts, like the directions like that, you know, just sort of like a general idea, like this is, um, you know, something falling away or something melting or just like a general sort of like, um, like visual or texture or whatever it is. Yeah, no, that, that's really interesting. And that actually makes so much sense. That's why I, I, listening to the music, you know, metal doesn't have the built in uh, uh, improv sections like uh, uh, jazz would. Yeah. Um, would you do you guys come from more of a metal background or a jazz background? I definitely come from metal. Like I grew up playing in like extreme metal bands, like mm-hmm. playing really like technical proggy kind of stuff. And um, so that's always, you know, like everything's written and it's all on a grid and you just kind of it, it comes down to muscle memory. Um, and my previous band, Orb Weaver, like we we kind of talked about you know starting to improvise and be more loose and free with things but like never really eventuated <laughs> um so it's it's kind of nice to just like start this new band taken in a completely different direction and play around with that like get off that metal grid and just bring in other sounds and like it, i mean it's i wouldn't even really call us a metal band <laughs> you know it's like it has those elements um mm-hmm. but it's it's just kind of pulling from all over the show mm-hmm. um and you know the other guys like they have um you know like such a vast background and like you know, like Kenny's done everything from like Latin jazz to, you know, black metal with Imperial Triumphant. And I mean, Trevor can play anything you throw at him. Same with Matt, you know, and they've, they've all worked with like so many different bands and musicians. And so it's, yeah, it's, it's really a pleasure to write and make music with, with them <laughs> for that reason. Yeah. Um, changing gears just a little bit. Since you guys are going to be performing at a festival, I was wondering if you had any sort of memorable moments at festivals for as an attendee or if you were ever able to perform at any of them it's been a while since i played a festival (laughs) um trying to think i mean i i guess like the first thing that comes to mind is when i was you know a teenager like still in new zealand and we would have the big day out festival and that was like a major thing where all these bands from overseas would come through which like basically only happened like once or twice a year back then so you know I got to see like you know Metallica, Primus, um, I think Queens of the Stone Age, stuff like that so that oh and then like um, Roger Waters one time which was pretty amazing but so I think yeah that, that really stands out for me just finally getting to see these bands that you grow up listening to and hearing about and because we were so isolated there you know like you wouldn't it's not like I mean especially in New York I mean there's you know amazing bland, bands playing like every weekend <laughs> so yeah yeah I'm always so surprised hearing all the big cities because Columbia we get we get quite a bit of touring bands you know we're one of the biggest cities in South Carolina but we're also still in South Carolina so we don't get too many but yeah. I, I remember hearing of bands that I quite enjoy going and playing two sets a night in New York because it's so big and bustling they'll play a 9 30 set finish sprint three blocks down the road, go play an 11.30 set at another place. And that, that just blows my mind. Yeah. Uh, with, you said your background from New Zealand and everything. Does that have any effect in your musical journey, considering it's so, it's so different than New York City? 
Yeah, I mean, like I was saying, we're, we're really isolated, um, which one of the good things about that is that the local music scene becomes really strong because you don't have all these international touring bands coming through. So people are really supportive of what's going on. And, um, but at the same time, it's still, because you don't get that same variety. So I was just surrounded by metal musicians and bands and that was kind of all I did back then. Um, and I mean, there were times, you know, in high school, like I took music and we'd be studying like classical music or like Baroque stuff or whatever it was. And I would kind of get ideas from those pieces and try to make them into metal riffs and which they came out really weird, <laughs> you know, um, which at the time, like the people I was playing with, they were like, what are you doing? That's not a riff. That's not 4-4. Four, four. Like, what is this? <laughs> you know, um, so it's kind of nice now to be playing with people that like get that, you know, get that it doesn't have to be on that grid and it can be in abstract or in different times or you know uh. yeah uh, you were mentioning like growing up you did that do you have any advice for any aspiring musicians people who perhaps are are in this sort of isolated thing where they don't have the exposure to other types of music do you have any advice for just aspiring musicians in general yeah I mean you know play with as many people as you can you know like play out um definitely like develop your ear that's going to be like your greatest asset um, and then also like writing write for an audience of one you know like write what you want to hear don't worry about what you think anyone else is going to think of it or interpret it or anything like that just write like become your own favorite band <laughs> you know and then winding down the last few questions of these uh basic ones um is there a specific subgenre you think doesn't get the attention that it deserves is there a, is there a subgenre that you can just put on listen to it all the time, but can't talk to anyone else about it because no one else really talks about it. Uh, <laughs> that's, yeah, that's a good question. Um, I don't know, I feel like my, I, I'm the wrong person in the band to ask that because I feel like anything I could name, they would have heard of and know more about it than me, <laughs> you know? So, um, but it's, you know, it's nice with the internet now. I think like anything that's out there, like somebody's heard of it, someone's listening to it. So I think just in general, like new bands really, like there's so many of us, like it's hard to kind of rise through all that. So it's just like pushing anything is a challenge. So. Mm -hmm. And then lastly, is there one track that you have that you, that you like that never gets old, no matter how many times you hear it? Uh, like of ours or just- it can, it can be of yours or it can just be in general for you guys. Oh, right. Um... Hmm. Totally unprepared. <laughs> <laughs> it, it's all good. You, you can take your time. We can edit this. You don't have to worry. <laughs> <laughs> cool. Um, that is a good question. Yeah, I think like it's it's more like albums for me, like like King Crimson, like Three of a Perfect Pair, or like Lars, Lark's Tongue, stuff like that. You know. Yeah, no, th yeah, those are good. We have a big poster of that in our uh, studio of King oh, Crimson. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I think that's all the questions I have. Uh, Joshua, you want to take it away from here? Yeah, yeah. So I I had the uh, opportunity to listen to uh, your your debut album. Um, I hope I'm pronouncing right. Cactides, right? Yeah. Okay. So so obviously I I I was able to listen to that extensively, um, and I I think I think William described it perfectly with the just the improv and stuff and I just wanted to say personally um everybody's dead Dave I really enjoyed I don't know why it even might even be because the, the title gave me a little bit of like you know I was like oh that's that's oddly specific but I I just really enjoyed that track but um I had a question about your new album uh I'm, Vonals is that how you say it Vonals or yeah okay so I, I did I did some looking into it because obviously I wanted to I wanted to uh, listen to it before I had the opportunity to interview you and I realized that your um, your label only uh, had it as a CD was that uh, was that a label choice or your choice or did you both like agree Yeah, that's a label choice. Um, they they generally focus on physical copies. Okay. Um, I'm hearing that it's available on iTunes, but it's not in America. So if you're out of the country, you can probably find it there. But ah, yeah. uh, there are, there's 
probably a few sites where you can download it. I'm still trying to figure out exactly which ones they are. <laughs> so, okay. so yeah. uh, before we get to the next question, uh, I, since I am the host, we have about nine minutes left. I'm going to try and I'll keep mine, uh, mine short so we have enough time for the outro and everything, but just letting you all, uh, both of you know. Um, and so my, my next question, and this, this really isn't a, a question more so than an observation. I, obviously, you know, you said a lot of your inspiration actually comes from the surrealist art. Mm -hmm. um, and I, you know, obviously I, I, I don't want to call it stalking, but I went on y'all's band camp um, and I see these, uh, you actually sold uh, or did commissions for art. Um, and so that makes me wonder, did you draw all of the album covers? Yeah, I, I painted them all um, like with acrylic on a uh, gesso board. So okay. yeah, I, yeah, I, I love having that outlet to express the visual side of it. I was going to say, they, they are really wonderful. And, and then I see in the background, is that is that a, an original? Yeah, that's actually the, the back cover of the album. Oh, OK. I was going to say, I, I know it, it, it's, it's kind of like, maybe not the inverse of the, of the, of the cover, but it's, it's, it's very similar. But uh, that's, those, those are the two big things that, that, that stuck out to me were the fact that you write as of right now, your the only way to listen to your album is on a CD. I think that's really um, very interesting and a very interesting move for, for 2022 where, where a, lot of, um, a lot of stuff is digital. But, and then I think, I think the last specific question I have is I read that, so in addition to surrealist art, um, you also tried to depict science fiction in, the, in your music. Uh, any 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 specific um, like you know pieces or works or just science fiction in general like you know like a whole world of possibility. Yeah, so um, everybody's dead, Dave. That's loosely based on. Well, I mean, the title itself comes from Red Dwarf, which is okay. this, if you're familiar with that. Um, for those who aren't, it's like this British sci-fi comedy series that like I was totally obsessed with when I was a kid <laughs> um and so it's, it's loosely based on that sort of storyline and then taking elements from like Doctor Who and um also like I read a lot of Philip K. Dick um Douglas Adams um you know re I read a lot on um I mean science not just science fiction like right. you know reading like about different books on physics and like I just actually while I was doing this I was reading the holographic universe and it's talking about how holograms are formed with like ripples and interference patterns and that's kind of where that comes into with the artwork is like these ripples which i originally came across like years back i was looking at some of Esher's works and he has um some like graphic art like sketches with ripples and that kind of fascinated me so it's kind of interesting how it ended up tying in with this too like what i was reading yeah i i i just think it's really cool that it's it's a not entire like you're not an entirely music based music group. It's, yeah, <laughs> it's, it's 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 media broadly, um, and so I guess the last question that I have it's about your performance uh, at the Jam Room Fest. Um, what 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 can we what can we expect? Uh, first album and second album. Uh, or like I know you said you're doing an album show at some point in the future, but will we will we get to hear both uh, at the Jam Room? So we're we're coming down as a quartet with Trevor Dunn. So okay. we have the two bass players, uh, which means we're mostly going to be playing new songs. Okay. Um, and possibly something from the new album. I mean, sorry, the first album. <laughs> okay. Well, I'm, yeah. I'm, de I'm definitely I'm definitely excited to 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 get to hear the the new material. Awesome. Thank you. I'm so glad you enjoyed it. And thanks oh for yeah, I I was <laughs> I was really I don't know it. I'm I'm mainly a metal listener, so when I when I heard it, I was like, first I was like, hmm. you know, I was like a little, off, not not off put, but it was new. And then I was like, oh yeah, no, wait, they know what they're doing. This is this is really nice. Uh, <laughs> Thank you. So um, I don't know, William, if you have any like closing. Uh, yes, yes, yes. Um, I just want to say uh, the M M C Escher esque uh, designs and everything look amazing. Uh, you guys have a great aesthetic. And uh, is there any final parting words that you'd like to say before we uh, sign this off? Yeah, we're, just, we're all really looking forward to coming down and playing to you guys and looking forward to meeting everyone in person. And yeah. So oh, yeah, it'll be, it'll be great.
yeah yeah and th thanks so much for having me on the show like it's great talking to you guys yeah absolutely no problem thank you for your time and make sure you guys go to jam room fest this weekend and catch all the acts performing